Hi, it's Nikki here from Happy Hormones for Life. And today I'm talking about something that's bothering a lot of us perimenopausal women and menopausal women, sleep. Now, so many of my clients are telling me that it's one of the things they really struggle with. And it's one of the most underestimated factors behind menopausal symptoms, fatigue, weight gain, and low mood. So um, what's, what are the main issues? Well, we're having trouble falling asleep. So we've got loads on our minds and we just can't relax. We're getting um, not enough sleep. So maybe less than seven hours sleep a night. We can be waking up at three or four in the morning. That's a classic one. And I'm calling early hours insomnia. We might be having constant interruptions, either from kids or other things. Uh, night sweats in particular. You might be waking up uh, with drenched sheets. Not fun. And you might be sleeping enough, actually, but waking up unrefreshed. And that's another big problem um, that we get in this age group and at this time of our lives. It feels like it's a real national epidemic at the moment. There's over 10 million prescriptions for sleeping pills being issued every single year in the UK. So it's not something that is a small problem. Now the trouble is that sleep is so crazily important um, and not just for the obvious reasons of, you know, helping your energy levels and your mood. It has so many other health benefits. It's the time when your body's uh, repairing, regenerating, um, it's when your brain's detoxifying and get rid of, getting rid of waste products. It's been shown to decrease the risk of Alzheimer's, um, which is very uh, recent research as well. And lack of sleep and poor quality sleep has been shown to increase the risk of all chronic disease, which is great, isn't it? But um, and the, the, what I want to focus on is that is the, the, the impact it has on your weight, particularly, and your hormones. Not great. This is what it does to your hormones. So first of all, it's increasing hunger hormones. So we have two very important hormones that regulate our appetites. Leptin tells the brain that we're full and ghrelin, which is the grumbly one, that's how I remember the name of it, um, tells the body to eat. That's that grumbly feeling you get when you're hungry. So guess what happens when we don't get enough sleep? Leptin goes down and ghrelin increases. So your body thinks that you are starving and either wakes you up to eat in the middle of the night or it stores fat away just in case you need it for energy and it makes you eat like crazy the next day. Um, studies have shown that you eat an extra 500 to 800 calories the next day if you're not getting uh, around six hours sleep per night. When leptin levels are low as well, it can impact your thyroid. Your thyroid can slow down your metabolism, making you feel really sluggish and tired um, and increasing uh, that weight gain as well. Lack of sleep can also increase insulin resistance, um, which is the condition uh, with, uh, leading up to the risk of diabetes. And um, poor, sleep, street, poor sleep also stresses out the body. So that can increase cortisol, which can stop you sleeping. So you get into this vicious cycle. So um, getting enough sleep is really important. How do we do it? So I'm gonna give you 10 tips um, to think about. You may have tried some of them already. There may be something in here that you haven't tried. So I'm gonna go for it. First thing, kill the lights. Artificial light interferes with your production of melatonin and that's your sleep hormone. And reduced melatonin makes it really hard to get good quality sleep. So we need to make our bedrooms as dark as possible. Pitch black if you can. Get rid of any artificial light coming in. Get some blackout blinds. Um, turn off any electronic lights, you know, from the alarm clocks or the TV or your gadgets. Blue light particularly has the most effect on melatonin. And that's the light that comes off gadgets. And even the smallest pinprick of light can be enough to disrupt your melatonin, apparently. Um, and eye masks aren't enough either. We have light detectors all over our skin, apparently. And that tells the brain that the sun's up, so don't make any melatonin. Uh, and if you have to get up in the night, try not to turn off, uh, turn the lights on, because that, again, is a signal to your brain that it's morning. Um, so uh, hopefully that, that will help with the light situation. Secondly, go to bed earlier. Now, we're all going to bed a little bit too late. Well, some of us are. The hours before midnight, it's an old wives' tale, but it's actually true are the most restorative. So 10 to 10.30 is the ideal time for your body to get to sleep. So try to go to bed 15 minutes earlier each week if you're not there yet, and that will you know, train your body uh, in a very gradual way. If that's actually impossible, then fix your bedtime and keep to it as much as you can. Number three, remove your gadgets. So keep your room gadget free if you can. Charge your phone or laptop in a different room. Um, or if you have to keep them in the room, put them on um, airplane mode, keep them away from your head um, and or turn them off at night. Um, because again, that can interfere with your sleep and those lights can interfere with your melatonin. 
Number four, relax your brain. So going over and over things that have happened, if you've had a stressful day or a lot going on, um, that obviously can stop you sleeping. So write it all down, get it out of your head, turn off TV, laptops, phones, watching the news. It's all bad, isn't it? Um, it's never very um, uplifting. Uh, watching thrillers before bed might sort of set your cortisol racing as well. So we want to be trying to not to excite the brain cells, but kind of depress them a little bit and uh, calm them down. Uh, number five, relax your body. Um, physical exercise helps with this. Uh, also having a bath, for instance, a warm bath in Epsom salts. Before bed, uh, a one cup of Epsom salts poured into warm water for about 20 minutes. Perfect. Rich in magnesium sulfate, a known muscle relaxant. And your skin absorbs what it needs and it gets you nice and relaxed. Next, avoid alcohol. Did a video on this recently. It might be used, um, useful for getting you off to sleep initially, but as it wears off, it has a stimulatory effect on your brain and it's going to ping you wide awake at three o'clock uh, with possibly low blood sugar and uh, dehydration. And then your liver's probably struggling to detoxify as well. And it may be really hard to get to sleep after that. So it also interferes with your production of serotonin, which is the precursor to melatonin in your sleep hormone. So we want to be kind of, it's not really good for sleep. Um, next thing is to limit caffeine. Obviously, if um, we, we all have different tolerances to caffeine. And as we age, actually our tolerance decreases, but it's also very reliant on your genetics as well. It can take up to three days for caffeine to clear from the body. So you can um, try decaf for a week, see if that helps with your sleep. Um, caffeine is also a diuretic, so you may find that you have to get up at, um, at night to go to the loo. Uh, watch out for coffee, caffeine as well, not just in coffee, but in soft drinks, energy drinks, chocolate and tea as well. Eat a low glycemic load diet, and that is about balancing your blood sugar, especially for your evening meal. If you're on a blood sugar roller coaster throughout the day, eating lots of sugar and carbs at each meal, it's going to carry on through the night, and it's going to likely wake you up at three o'clock and, and interrupt your, your sleep. So we want to be avoiding, especially for evening meals, quick release carbohydrates like white bread, potatoes, white rice, sugar, processed foods, that kind of stuff, as that spikes your blood sugar, spikes your insulin, raising stress hormones, and getting you possibly waking up in the middle of the night. Next, hydration, really, really key, because your sleep can be interrupted if you're dehydrated. Again, that's another one that will wake you up in the night as it stimulates cortisol, it's a stress on the body. Next one is supplements. Now, these can be really helpful if you're having real problems sleeping. Tryptophan is um, the precursor to melatonin. It helps to make that in the body and it's protein. So food sources include whey protein if you're, if you're looking at shakes, um, meat, fish, dairy, nuts and seeds. Anything like that in your evening meal is going to help you produce tryptophan. L-theanine is a really calming nutrient found in tea, um, black and green particularly. Magnesium helps to relax the body. I've talked about the bath. Um, but you can also get that in supplements. Uh, it also helps to increase GABA, which is your calming neurotransmitter. Valerian um, is a herb. It's long been used for sleep issues. Chamomile, things like that. Lovely, some lovely sleep teas that you can try. Doesn't work for everyone, but it's worth a try. But always check your supplements with your doctor or your health practitioner in case you're on any medication or uh, anything like that. And lastly, apps. You know, like apps is a double-edged sword because you don't want to be switching uh, gadgets on next to your bed, but there are some apps that are really helpful. I personally prefer the breathing ones and things like Calm, really nice, they've got a breathing thing on there, uh, or any kind of meditation or mindfulness um, solutions that work for you, but whatever works. So I hope that helps. Let me know in the comments what you've tried, anything else I've missed that I need to know about. Please subscribe if you're watching on YouTube or contact us for a discovery call if you'd like some more personalized advice. See you next time.